by far the number one most requested topic in the comments of my videos has been dead hard and while it may seem like an obvious example of a controversial perk the perk has only ever received one change outside of some slight animation adjustments and behind the scenes movement speed curve changes but despite its changelog being tiny, Dead Hard has quite the history behind it, with the community turning it into a multi-purpose utility perk and cementing it as one of the highest pick rate perks consistently before its eventual rework. Let me explain to you how Dead Hard dominated the Dead by Daylight meta and in several instances broke the game. Dead Hard released all the way back on the 27th of July 2017 alongside David King and the Huntress in the free DLC chapter A Lullaby for the Dark. David King's two other perks were We're Gonna Live Forever, a perk that gave up to 100% bonus points when the perk was fully stacked, and No Mither, Mither, I've never heard an actual human being say that word before, which let the player fully recover themselves from being slugged at the expense of being permanently injured and unable to ever heal to full, effectively making it a hard mode perk, which was quite the opposite of Dead Hard, which was effectively easy mode as it allowed the user to press the active ability button while injured to dash forward in a locked straight line, making them completely immune to damage during the animation and granting them a little bit of distance from the dash. While Dead Hard granted nowhere near as much distance as Sprint Burst or Balanced Landing, with them granting over four times as much distance, what Dead Hard did provide was reliability, the ability to activate the perk the moment you needed it, opposed to Sprint Burst activating immediately as soon as you run, or just whenever the exhaustion was over. Oh yes, exhaustion went down while sprinting in those days, which absolutely did mean survivors would sprint burst at the start of a chase, loop the killer for 60 seconds, and then automatically sprint burst again, resetting the chase once again. Crazy, I know, but it's not as crazy as the fact that over 87% of people watching this video are not subscribed, so if you enjoy this type of vid, be sure to sub as it helps out a lot more than you could ever imagine. By nature, this also meant Dead Hard could be used multiple times too, but while Dead Hard in its prime was viewed as a tool to chain loops together or sometimes avoid a hit to reset the chase, Sprint Burst already filled that role in a far stronger capacity. Once again, Sprint Burst provided significantly better distance than Dead Hard, which meant any time it activated mid-chase to reset, it was resetting by getting you to the opposite side of the map, rather than Dead Hard getting you to the next loop or the opposite side of the loop, which in turn meant the killer had to either abandon you entirely or waste far more time catching up to you to resume the chase. Pair that with the fact that Sprint Burst would instantly activate at the start of a chase to ensure that plenty of time is wasted before things have even started, and it's no surprise to see that Sprint Burst reigned supreme initially. It wouldn't be until an entire year later, on the 24th of July 2018, when patch 2.1.0 was released, when Dead Hard would fully go mainstream. Nerf. Exhaustion no longer recovers while sprinting. While this nerf of course hurt all exhaustion perks, it hit Sprint Burst far harder than any of the others and, in turn, Dead Hard would become more appealing. Players did quickly discover that they could wait until their exhaustion was 99% recovered and then keep sprinting to allow them to use Sprint Burst whenever they liked, which meant that it could still be used to reset a chase even after the nerf, but players now had to make a choice between using it at the beginning of a chase or saving it to reset. However, this trick did in turn mean that the user would not be able to do any gens or totems or heal anyone, pretty much anything useful to their team, as the instant they stopped sprinting, their Sprint Burst would come off cooldown and would in turn instantly activate the next time they sprinted. So, realistically speaking, most people would be using Sprint Burst immediately at the start of a chase, as 99%ing it made them a pretty big liability to their team. While this change brought Dead Hard into the spotlight and made it one of the most popular survivor perks, its notoriety had been slowly increasing in the background this entire time. Although most of the general player base may have taken about a year to find value in Dead Hard, whether that be due to Sprint Burst overshadowing it or just people weren't good enough to earn value from it, remember, lots of people in this era struggled to even look behind them during chases, let alone time a Dead Hard, but some people had realised its potential much earlier. In game, these years were the years of bully squads, but on YouTube, this was the era of montages. The most popular videos at the time were YouTubers quote-unquote duking killers. While in most games duking meant faking your movement to dodge enemy abilities or shots, for old school DBD YouTube, duking just meant looping killers or pretty much doing anything to troll the killer or just not die. Most of the time, this was stuff as easy and simple as insta-blinding a killer, or taking a hit, insta-healing and taking a hit again. 
but the more skilled creators would incorporate genuine dukes into their videos such as window faking, 360s and so on. This isn't throwing shade at anyone, the platform was simply different back then to how it is now. And as the player base was much newer to the game, lower skilled and was new to a lot of these concepts, people thought it was absolutely hilarious, and any surefire way to make people laugh was the killer missing a swing, and content creators quickly realised Deadard was the perfect addition to their arsenal. After a string of looping, 360ing the killer, fake window vaulting, and just generally beating the killer in a chase, Deadard would serve as the perfect way to let the killer think they're just about to kill you before pressing the ability button to snatch the victory right out of their hands. Bonus points if the killer rage quit or face camped afterwards. While Dead Hard was certainly never useless and always saw some usage, a lot of people considered it as a perk that only top tier players would get value from and that most people would be better off served with Sprint Burst. It wouldn't be until that exhaustion nerf when Dead Hard finally had the spotlight. Dead Hard started to gain traction as more players began to use it to avoid hits and as the perk became more common over the years, killers started to become more annoyed by it. Some players felt frustrated that the perk effectively served as a third health state and that it made things too hard for killer players, with many saying it should either make the survivor immune or give them the dash, not both. But higher tier killers quickly learnt that baiting Deadard was really easy. All they had to do was walk within melee range and wait a moment. The survivor would dead hard preemptively assuming that the killer would lunge and as soon as the dead hard was over, boom, free kill. Good players made this bait their second nature, doing it whenever going for an injured survivor without even thinking about it. While this worked absolutely fine for your run of the mill mass 1 killers, for someone like the Huntress, the Nurse, etc, the perk was effectively uncounterable. Throw a hatchet as Huntress? They'll dead hard it. You can't fake a hatchet throw from a distance. Don't use your hatchet? Then you're playing a slow killer without an ability. Or Nurse. She only had a small window to attack after blinking, so she couldn't afford to wait for the dead hard. If she did wait, she'd go into fatigue and still be out of the hit, so she had no choice but to go for the swing a lot of the time. But it's the Nurse, so maybe a perk hitting her harder than most other killers was a good thing anyway. Even killers with insta-downs like Hillbilly or Bubba weren't safe, as even if the very first hit was with a chainsaw insta-downing the survivor, once they got revived or unhooked, they could simply refuse heals and remain injured all game long, allowing them to use Deadheart to immune the chainsaws as well. One of the worst things was the fact that survivors could use Deadheart to dash clean over trappers traps, not triggering them at all. A hard blow to a killer already struggling. So, outside of the select few characters that didn't have much they could do against Dead Hard due to their abilities, most killer players figured out how easy it was to counter it when it was used to avoid a hit. Outside of its then consistent usage, Dead Hard would also see occasional spikes of additional usage from time to time. Why would non Dead Hard users suddenly start using it for a short time only to stop again the next patch? Bugs, of course. Due to the dash on Dead Hard having much more acceleration on it than other exhaustion perks, the perk was the cause of a wide variety of bugs. Some were tiny bugs that ended up being accepted as a trick that good players could use, while others would be completely game-breaking. As in, escaping with zero gens done and all survivors still alive level of game-breaking. One of the most famous tricks that was generally accepted by the community was the ledge jump on Red Forest. Using Dead Hard, survivors could jump from the slightly higher platform to the lower one mid-chase, which would cause any unsuspecting killers to fall off or counter-rotate. Experienced killers would just use their lunge to achieve the exact same jump as a Dead Hard user did, so it was no problem for them. But in terms of game-breaking bugs, there were quite a few different instances over the years. Players could use Dead Hard over small gaps, and if they hit the opposite side of the gap at the right angle, the acceleration from Deadard would bounce them upwards and allow them to get completely out of the map. From there, they could simply walk to the exit gate from the outside, step over the trigger point, and boom, easy win. Well, sometimes. Once a player was out of the map, there was nothing stopping them from sitting out there indefinitely and holding the game hostage for literally hours. Remember, it wasn't until midway through 2019 that the end game collapse was added, so before then there was nothing to prevent hostage scenarios. While some people were indeed malicious and absolutely held the game hostage, I think the majority of people just wanted to see what it was like getting out of the map on Dead by Daylight. So every time a new out of the map glitch with Deadard was found, a surge of new people would start using the perk just to do the glitches, even if they weren't normally a Deadard user. While this wasn't bad to the point where players would be doing it every game, out of the map glitches are always a high priority fix in multiplayer games, so most of these would be fixed within 3 months. 
Alongside the out of the map glitches, players could also use Dead Hard to reach glitch spots. Some of these spots would just be funny little places that serve no actual purpose, while others would render them completely unkillable. One map I remember being particularly bad for this was the game, where people would frequently use the small square holes to launch themselves on top of crates. The first hit to Dead Hard would take place in September of 2019, when Dead by Daylight would switch from P2P, or peer to peer, to dedicated servers. A large chunk of the community had been begging for dedicated servers for literally years at this point, as theoretically it would improve the gameplay experience all round, as everyone would have better connection and the game would be safer to play, as peer-to-peer -peer exposes people's IP addresses. I said in theory because this is behaviour we're talking about here. Things are not going to go to plan. Even in 2022, players' IP addresses are still getting leaked, so that's one of the positive aspects of dedicated servers down the drain. And the servers themselves, or the game's integration of the servers, are outright horrible. One of the main reasons people wanted the servers back in the P2P days was if you ended up against a killer with a bad connection, as the killer was the host of the game back then, you would end up lagging, while they would be absolutely fine, which was called host advantage. So if you were connecting to a server instead, your connection would be good consistently and it wouldn't be a lucky dip. But in actuality, the average experience we have still to this very day on dedicated servers is far poorer than what we had in the peer-to-peer -peer days. Of course, there were some bad hosts with particularly poor connection on peer-to-peer, -peer, including the birth of Zimbabwe Bubba, but the reason it was a big enough ordeal to get turned into a meme is because it was such a rare occurrence to have laggy games back then. A lot of the people complaining about bad peer-to-peer -peer connection were, ironically, the people who had the bad connection, and no game server is going to miraculously upgrade your internet package. The reason this affected Dead Hard is because when you press Dead Hard and yet nothing happens and you proceed to go down, that's not the game bugging or bad hitboxes, it's the bad servers being too slow to respond to your Dead Hard input in time. Chances are almost every single person watching this video has had that happen to them, and these servers are the reason why. Whereas back then, in the peer-to-peer -peer days, at least for people with good connection, this was very uncommon. Due to the servers making Dead Art fail half the time, the perk became far less reliable for avoiding hits. But Dead Art was far from destroyed. Of course, the perk still worked like normal half the time, but pairing that with killers now learning how to bait it out meant that avoiding hits was less consistent and less effective than ever before, which meant players who wanted optimal value from this perk, especially against good killers, would no longer focus on avoiding hits, and would instead focus on using it to connect to a loop they otherwise wouldn't reach, or travel further along a loop before the killer was even within lunge range. This, unlike the old playstyle, was much less counterable as killer, as it would take place before you had the chance to bait it. This of course caused more frustration, as it was no longer the killer's mistake for failing to bait it, and instead became the survivor pressed E to not die. Dead Art would once again step into the buggy, abusable perk territory in August of 2020, when crossplay was added to Dead by Daylight. It's no surprise to anyone watching this that Dead by Daylight's console ports are absolutely horrendous. Loading times long enough to resemble PS1 games, frame rates dipping into the single digits, and unacceptable levels of input delay are just some of the issues plaguing the console ports. And with that, Dead Hard had a new, secondary effect to any killers playing on console. Buff. When activated, if the killer is playing on console, the killer will be frozen in place for 3 seconds. Of course, I'm joking, that wasn't a real buff, but it was a real bug, as you can see on screen now. I wonder which perk had the most bugs associated with it, Balanced Landing or Dead Hard? Let me know guys. Just as a quick side note too, there was a public test build where Dead Hard could be curved instead of being locked in a straight line, but that ultimately never made it to the live game. It wouldn't be until July of 2022 when Dead Hard would receive its rework. It's worth noting that just like Hex Ruin, the devs specifically stated that these changes were due to the perk's pick rate being too high. So what were the changes? Nerf. Dead Hard no longer provides a dash. Change. Instead of being invulnerable, Dead Hard now grants the endurance status effect for the duration. When this change went live, Dead Hard's duration was also doubled from half a second to one full second, but this quickly got halved again soon after due to it being too strong, turning it into the version of the perk we see today. On paper, the change sounds quite simple. The perk can no longer be used to chain to the next loop, but can still be used to avoid a hit. 
but due to the endurance effect it now uses, and by extension the deep wound effect that comes with that, there is now a lot more nuance to the perk. While it is more counterable now, being stripped down to purely its damage avoiding and losing its dash mechanic, it now has a much bigger payoff when successfully avoiding a hit. As before, the only distance you would gain is the killer being slowed from their weapon miss animation paired with the tiny dash from the perk itself, but now you get an entire on-hit burst, effectively granting you a sprint burst when successfully used. Higher risk, higher reward. The perk still works wonders against Nurse, Huntress, etc, the standard killers that can't bait the perk, but some of the weakest killers in the game have deep wounds in their kits, the Legion and the Deathslinger. As endurance can't be stacked or reused until fully mended, this means that killers with deep wounds in their kit effectively disable Deadard, which is probably a good thing as those killers do not need the added burden of another health state to work through. While the original version of Deadard was considered effectively a third health state, Deadard is now literally a third health state, the exact same thing that made the original Metal of Man so ungodly overpowered. And while Deadard is still the topic of heated discussions to this very day, it isn't getting anywhere near the level of hate that Metal of Man did. So why is that? There could be a variety of reasons. Endurance no longer being stackable, dead hard requiring timing, whereas metal was active permanently once earned, but I think the biggest contributor to the new dead hard not being as hated as metal is simply because of the dedicated servers. A lot of the time, dead hard simply doesn't activate, even if you activate it early to make up for it. So what would be an extra health state, increasing the length of a chase by a hefty amount, ends up serving as an empty perk slot. Of course, Dead Heart doesn't fail every single time, but a 25% failure rate has a massive impact on how strong a perk is perceived, and in my experience, and a lot of people in my Twitch chat, Dead Heart fails a lot more than 25% of the time. While Dead Hard was reworked to make it less enticing to pick, it still remains one of the most picked survivor perks in the game, and I'm still seeing it about as much as I saw it before the change. So, what do you think about the Dead Hard's change? Do you prefer the new one, or do you prefer the old one? Let me know in the comments below, and thank you so much for sticking to the end. If you have anything else you'd like me to discuss in a similar style to this video, be sure to let me know. You can catch me live on twitch.tv slash ardether.